a very good evening to you and thanks for joining us once again on your one and only program questions in the heart. How's your day been? Um, thank you to those who got in touch with us during the week. Thanks for your phone calls, your text messages, your emails. We really, really thank God for you being part of what the Lord is using this program to do. I pray that the Lord will increase and enlarge you on every side in Jesus name. Tonight we live on www.faithworldtv.com for your friends and family members who are not on Skype. Quickly get in touch with them. I can assure you tonight is a show you don't want to miss. Our topic tonight is why do we have a, a great percentage of single women in the world we live in today and especially in the church. What's going on? Well, some will say, uh, well, women are too independent these days. Uh, I know you have so many reasons you can give for women being single in today's world and especially in the church. When God created us, he had in mind relationship. He had in mind love. He had in mind companionship. But today it's, it's a bit difficult. Women are t taking a, a, a stance on being alone and being fulfilled. Well, I don't know what is really responsible for this. Some women, have, I, was, I, I had a chat with a lady during the week and she felt, um, well, what does she need a man for when she can get satisfied with sex toy? Mm. It's that bad. Well, I've got two great generals in the house with me tonight who would really, really dig deep into the reason why a great percentage of our women in today's world, and especially in the church, are single. I'll go on a short break, and when I return, I'll get you to meet my guests. Don't touch the dial. I'll see you soon. <laughs> We are here only because of you. If questions in the heart have been a blessing, we would ask of you to please fall towards our ministry so we can keep doing what we do. Please support us. Our website address is www.questionsintheart.com. Please click on the PayPal link. Telephone. 0788-120-7952. As you give to us this work, we can reach more and liberate more. God bless you. Debbie Ferriera is a model and fashion designer based in Chertsey, Surrey. She owns a ladies boutique specializing in designer wear, shoes, accessories and jewelry. The boutique is named Art Boutique because of the bright colors in the clothes range. Offering clothes to suit all seasons, whether it's for daytime, work or evening events, Debbie has something to suit all ladies requirements. The range of clothes at Art Boutique come from all over the world. Portugal, Spain, Italy, Paris and America. Specific items can also be ordered in if requested. Come and visit Art Boutique for a personal, friendly and enjoyable experience. We look forward to meeting you. Visit us on Facebook.com under Art Boutique Fashion. Well, don't mind me trying to <laughs> juggle one or two things before I return live. Well, thanks for staying with us. Tonight, like I told you, I've got two generals in the house with me. They are both um, great authors and um, inspirational speakers. Um, I've, um, well, listened to, um, well, I would say, one or two of their messages from social media. And I know tonight they would not leave you without something that will impact 
and change your life. Are you a single woman? Are you a single man? Tonight's show is for you. Um, welcome with me. Ladies first to say, after me. Welcome with me tonight. Um, I call her Minister Gladys Famorio. Am I right? You're right. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. Nice having you on Questions in the Heart. It's your first time on this show. It is, yes. Wow. It's great to have you tonight. You want to say hi to our fans all over the world? Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Stay tuned because I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic debate today. Definitely. Definitely. I'm coming back to you. And um, uh, sitting with him tonight is, if, if you go on his wall and... Um, you know, have a look at his quotes. You think, where is this man? Where is he coming from? What's he up to? You've been a blessing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank and you. your your daughter's uh, um, acronym. That's why. Right. Oh my word! <laughs> I can. I can. Yeah. That's a serious. That's one. why. I, I, all negativity. I shared that with a friend last night. I said, "Will you believe that was from a seven-year-old right, girl?" Yeah. Mm. God is in. Amen. In, the, in the process of doing something wonderful mm -hmm. in and through you and your household. That's right. You want to say hi to Gospel Hi, Father. everyone. Um, my name is Ferdinand Lawson. Um, by the grace of God, I'm here to support and impart your life this evening. I can. I can. I can you conquer can. every <coughs> negativity. Who is Gladys Famoria? Okay, well, I'm uh, a woman who's passionate about developing people, in particular women. Um, sorry. <laughs> In particular, women. Oh, um, and I do that through books. I've written a couple of books. I run a women's ministry that deals about emotional baggage. You might have heard about it, overcoming Definitely. emotional baggage, uh, women's conferences and retreats. Wow. Um, I run an academy for women, the Gladys Family Academy, to develop female authors, speakers, and leaders. Mm. Wow. So, yes, uh, I'm, I'm quite busy, but it's all about empowering people and trying to find avenues to do so. You know what excites me about you? I saw the picture and the comments from your institution when you graduated your second master's degree. Okay, and yes. I went, wow, what a woman of potential. <laughs> Thank God. The Lord is your strength. You, you're doing really well. You're doing Thank really you well. So and um, I would encourage women to go for it. Education has no limits. Absolutely. It has no hands. When you stop learning, you stop leaving. Yeah. You've got two masters. You go on academy, you're writing. Your life is beautiful. You're occupied positively. You're making yeah. impact. We thank God. How women should do that, isn't it? Uh, I think everyone should just, um, identify what their purpose is mm. and go for it. That because that's why we're here. Uh -huh. Just like Esther, I believe we're all here for such a time as this. As this. So um, it's about using what's in your hand. In fact, we were talking earlier on. You know, we, we, Exodus four two that says, you know, when God brought to attention what was in uh, Moses's hand, and he said, "What's that in your hands?" Mm. For I some people, it. it's creativity. Whatever some people, you know, there are different things that we all have go passions to do. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. <laughs> you know, you're made a unique entity so yeah. pursue that so yeah that's um, something I'm really passionate about getting people to Get recognize the gift on the inside mm. and use it mm. so they don't go to their grave carrying that okay. same talent with them you can say that again welcome one more time on questions there um, who is Mr. Lawson <laughs> well as I said uh, my name is Ferdinand Lawson um, I'm a motivational speaker and award-winning author um, you were done for years yes what happened <laughs> well, um, as I said, um, I never spoke until the age of 10. Wow. Yeah, until the age of 10. Uh, the reason I had a delayed speech, and I do summit sometimes. But then um, that, 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 I call that the background. I don't look at it. I move mm. on with what God has deposited in me mm. to be able to impact life. And I believe that, um, as my sister said, we are here for the time like this. Mm. And then the, the reason we are here for a, co for a purpose, for a cause, to be able to impact life, to challenge life, motivate people, to inspire them to become what God has called them to be. To be. So regardless of the challenge, regardless of your background and your limitation, I believe that mm -hmm. I'm here as a, myself as a seed to the world. And mm -hmm. therefore, that's what I'm doing. I'm sowing myself as a seed. So wow. this is what I do in the community and all over the place. Wow. Welcome on Questions in the Arts. Thank you. Let's kick the ball rolling. Hmm. There is a serious percentage of singleness in today's world, especially when it comes <coughs> to the world of women. Mm. 
in the world and especially in the church. I am going to get be personal with you, but not now. Okay. And yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about, <laughs> but, but now we'll get there soon. God designed marriage for a purpose. As a matter of fact, he created us so that we can, he can enjoy communion with us. Mm. Come, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, he wanted us as companion. He wanted us, he wanted us for friendship, for union. Mm. Marriage is something that should be desired by everyone. But the story is not the same in today's world. My first question tonight, and I want to start with Gladys, is marriage for everyone. If God has so designed it beautifully, if it's something that everyone should look forward to, want to go into it, is, is, is this the purpose of God for creating marriage? Is marriage for everyone? Uh, well, in answer to your question, I think the, the, the reality is it's not. Because if you look in the Bible, there's people like Apostle Paul who had a gift to be able to stay celibate. So I believe there's still a number of people who feel that they have that gift. Um, and there are also some people who, out of choice, decided not to get married. So whilst it's, it's a wonderful gift, as you rightfully said, um, not everybody um, is getting married. Not everybody is getting married. So if not, if not everybody is getting married, Mr. Lawson, how do I know if marriage is for me or not? Well, um, as you said, you said desire. So somebody has to desire from the introduction. Mm -hmm. It's a marriage, it was created as a community, as an institution by God, mm -hmm. that for man and woman for procreation. Now, it is the case that as an individual, as a man or woman, it, or as we see it as a marriage institution, that means you choose to go to university, you mm -hmm. go to go to college, you choose and make that choice. Education is there for everyone. Everybody is entitled to go for education, but the question is, do you want to go to invest? Do you want to go to study? Do you want to, study? Do you want to do something for yourself? So when you bring in the same as to marry that institution, people would like to go, people want to desire to marry. They would wish to have been married, but they don't want to do it. So I'm, I think where I would say it is for everyone, I would say yes and no, because it's an individual choices. So the question is, how do you know if marriage is good for me? Until you enter, you don't know whether it's good for you. I believe that until you until enter into something, you wouldn't know whether it's good for you. You might be on this sideline to admire it, desire for it. But until you enter into something, I believe you will not be able to see the benefit of it. So it does my hand and answer the question. Because not everybody is destined to get married. It's a desire that God said, which the Bible says, what well, I've said before you, life and death. So the same thing I've said before you marry. It's up to you to go and enter or not. I, mean, I think that's my answer to that question. So I don't okay. Think Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll bring it home tonight. Okay. Um, experience, they say, is the best teacher. That's right. mm. Gladys, are you married? I'm not. No. Not yet. Not yet. That's right. I have the desire. Not That's yet. You have the desire. Yeah. Mm. But you're not yet married. Yeah. Are you of um, a marriageable age? I should hope so. <laughs> yes. 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 So why are you not married? He just said something. He okay. said it's a matter of choice. Okay. You mentioned something, you have the desire. Absolutely. But you're not married. Yeah. You are a woman of potential. You've got okay. so much going on for you. Mm. You are a woman of influence. You've got all it takes to be any man's choice. Why are you not married? <laughs> Me personally, you know what, I believe in the scripture that says he makes everything beautiful in its time. Um, God has a time and a season for every single one of us to do certain things in their lives. And this is my season to do other things. But I do believe that at some point that I will get married. You're not answering my question. Okay. <laughs> I believe God makes all things beautiful in his Absolutely. time. I know God's time is the best. Okay. Are you telling me you've not tried? Are you telling me you're not looking? Absolutely. I mean, this is my strategy with anything in life, and I teach that to women. It's about watching and praying. I, I have this analogy about the God factor and the me factor. There's things I place in his hands and say, Lord, you know what? I need you to help me and help me choose because I think I know what I want, but actually he knows what I need. Okay, so I put that in his hands. But also, when I'm watching and when I'm praying, it's not just a case of, oh, Lord, you know, keep my eyes open. What's going on around me? And I think sometimes the trap some of us fall into is, is we can 
do one to the extreme of the other. Whereas, you know, to be honest, he's not going to be an angel that's going to fall out of the sky. He's around us. So, um, yeah, that's my answer to I'm that. I'm a very practical person. Okay. Do you want to tell me men are not approaching you? Okay. Men do, yes. So, what happened? Okay. Mr. Wright is not there yet. <laughs> Well, when you say approaching, you know, you can get anything from like Facebook, you know, um, inbox messages of a corny kind. Why you know. say proposals? <laughs> I wouldn't say proposals, but sometimes, um, you know, people see things on the surface and um, think that that's what they want because of what they see, mm. but you don't actually yes. know more about it. So I think um, it's not necessarily for a lack of um, people not necessarily being around, but for me, I'm a woman of prayer and I commune with my father. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just because I may want to and I see something that looks good doesn't always mean it's the right thing for Gladys. Okay. So that's my personal choice. So over the years, you're yet to really, really see, or God has not but, led you to. Uh, I, I'm, I'm okay. sorry, Mr. Yeah, Rossi. sure. I'm concentrating on that because she's like, that's a, fine. A proper <laughs> no, no, but, but that's fine. But you remember, it's again seasons. What you may have. If you'd asked me, perhaps maybe 10 years ago, I wasn't, I didn't want to, not necessarily not want to get married, but I had other things that I wanted to do. So it's not so much that, you know, we all go through times and we go through seasons in our life. And I'm saying now that, yes, I do have a desire and it will happen. And when the right person comes along, trust me, I will know. That's the point, the right person. Mr. Yeah. Lawson, you've had Gladys. That's right. If someone is of a marriageable age and um, yet not married, especially a woman, what do you think is responsible? What? You are a man. I'm a man. Uh -huh. because I, I, want, I want to move away from judge, being judgmental. Okay. Oh. That's that what I don't want to do. Okay. Because um, um, if, let's say you're my sister, and mm -hmm. uh, you're maybe of that age, and you have to get married, you got everything that you need it for. I mean, that's something that a man will go for. Mm. And then you, you're not married. The quest, first question is why? Mm. And the question is, why don't you want to get married? And if you give me an answer that you... Because what we don't want to do, we don't want to force it on people. Because one mm. people we don't want to do, to, I mean, for young people, mm. people who are single, mm. is to force them into marriage. Mm. You know, persuade them, oh, you are getting old, you, you are, you know, you are, the clock is turning. And mm. what, what's, what, what's clock? What clock are we talking about? Yeah. Mm. And therefore, if you tell somebody, go, what are you trying to do? You're forcing the person to do things that they are not actually ready for. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it could be they are not ready. It could be they are not desiring for it. Maybe they are not, uh, they are not preparing for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I mean, they, they are probably working on themselves because some mm -hmm. of the reasons why people tend to be single. Well, I've been a single, I'm married. I've been a single before. And the only thing that I've realized that people get married because of family expectation. They want to get married to work. I want to get married to show that I'm also a man or a woman. No, that's not the point. But when you get into this kind of marriage, get into this kind of relationship, they struggle because people have forced you into it. Mm. So this is what I was saying for my introduction. Until you enter into something, you will not know the potent, the, the, the validity of that, mm. of that marriage. So for me to say, for glad it's not getting married, yeah, it's kind of imbalanced for me. I say, okay, maybe it's a career woman. She's got it takes to be a wife. <laughs> No, but you're missing the point. I mentioned something strategic earlier on. Yeah. Times and seasons. I know. Marriageable I know. age, you can get married in this country, what is it, 18 or even 16, 16. in yeah, certain yeah, parts? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, you know, so it depends on when, you know, you mentioned the valid point. It depends on when the person of one also feels ready as well. I was going to come to you on that. Okay. Yeah. At what point do you think a woman to be ready? It's a we'll personal thing. I cannot speak for anyone. Um, for example, you might get an 18 year old show up at their pastor's office to say, I found some my life partner and I'm ready to get married. They feel they're mature, they feel in the right place and they feel that's what God wants them to do. Mm. And that's absolutely fine. But you might get somebody who, you know, maybe a few years down the line, uh, maybe in their 40s or whatever, now feel actually, you know what, I'm ready because I've maybe I've developed myself, I've fulfilled mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's not, there's no right or wrong age to get married. And just because, I mean, when it we say- Readiness is all about age. It, I don't believe readiness is all about age. So what other things are involved in I think there's someone being ready, especially a woman being ready for marriage? Ready? There's so many things. You know, for example, you know, for example, we said earlier on, you were talking, you're studying. Mm -hmm. you know, so, for example, is it that they're trying to better themselves for whatever reason? You know, it, that's not a crime. Mm -hmm. You know, people can do so many different things with their lives. They may have, others, they may have certain goals that they want to put in place. There could be other external factors, cultural factors, all sorts of influence in, 
determining mm. the, determining that. Mm. So you can't just say just because someone's a marriageable, a tick box, that's it, go in there and get married. It doesn't work like that. And we also live in a society whereby, I mean, maybe if we were back home, things are different, you know, but we're all in a society where whether you like it or not, you know, you have to work, you have to get on with things. So um, I don't really, you know, I th as I said, that's why I used that scripture earlier on. He makes everything beautiful in season. And to be honest, I don't think I've even wanted to have been married so many years ago because what I have learnt now is setting me up mm. for where God is taking me. Mm. So for me, I value the life experiences, I value the things that even God's allowed me to do. And you know what, sometimes when we're sitting, waiting, it could be Father saying, use that thing in your hands. As you're doing it, I will bring to pass the thing that you want. Mm. So for, that's, my, that's my approach and that's how I feel God is taking me. It's not to say, you know, um, that, oh, I've seen that one, I've seen that one, so oh, no, no, because I know that it's about seasons. And if I enter into something at the wrong season, I mean, we see the statistics today. In fact, I did a survey before I came on the show on Facebook to, to find out about the singleness. As many people who thought they were ready, who rushed in, and I know we're going to deal with the settle thing, you know, about people settling, yeah. who felt peer pressure and whatnot to, to go into it, they're all coming out of it. You know, so there, there, there has to be less, and unfortunately, it's a reflection of what's going on in our society today, but it shouldn't be amongst us. So why hurry? Why the rush? Why the rush? You know, you talked about, you know, fantastic point, the biological clock, but hey, we serve a God who can do all things. Yeah. So, so hey ho, what does that matter? <laughs> no, seriously. What, um, no, because we're dealing with spiritual principles why here. Why the rush? <laughs> okay. Why the rush? Well, why, no, because, you know, it, if, if we're going to go by just, you know, body alarms and all those kind of things, you know, to be honest, as I said, it, that's, that's to me, that's just a reason you know, to try, you know, get married. But for the grace of God, people are getting, ma you know, getting married and having children as mature singles. It can be done. I'm going back. Okay, right. I'm going back. You're going to say something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going back to what you were just saying, that um, um, people should make the choice that you have to make. And then also, it no, you don't have to be pushed into it. Now, um, for me, if, well, I was going to use my as an example. Mm -hmm. When I got married, I got married when I was in university, second year. Now, to somebody putting myself in your shoe, mm. that could be your career being jeopardized. You mm. putting your career, uh, your mm. marriage mm. for your career. Now, when I was getting my, I got people telling me, why don't, why, why, why the rush? Mm. And I said to them, I think I'm ready. No, you have to believe in yourself mm. that you are ready. You see, when people ask you to do something or get into marriage and you're not ready, you think that you're, you're, you're Bible says what? A stable, a stable man. A, confused, a person who is not stable, mm -hmm. they are confused in their own way. You are, not, you are not stable, you are wobbling. You are not sure whether you are in or you are out. That is why the statistic shows that you know, young, um, the number of people entering to marriage are now coming out because they went in there without firstly knowing who they are. And I have always said to people, before you get into marriage, know who you are. Mm -hmm. Know what you want. Know why you are, you see, if you don't know why you are doing something, you mm -hmm. just do it because others say you should do it. But when, you, when trouble comes, you turn your back, the people are not there to mm -hmm. answer the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, you asked me to get into marriage, now you see what I'm going to, ah, uh -uh, papa, why now? Mm -hmm. You are struggling because you chose to enter because of people peer pressure. Mm -hmm. So I believe that maybe if I'm on both sides, myself, and you what you're saying, it's down to an individual knowing who you are, believing what, what do you want in life, purpose. And I believe that people shouldn't get into marriage be, without knowing the purpose of getting to Maybe it's because of, you know, I want a companion because it's winter time, I need somebody to warm me up, I need somebody to put me in the car, bottles. maybe somebody to cuddle me, you know, somebody to walk me down the park. Oh, if that is no. what you're getting into marriage for, I think you, you miss the point. Because marriage is like a one-way traffic to hell or to, to heaven him. on earth because it can destroy your life or it can make it better so mm. why don't you wait take your time i will say two three things prepare mm. pray and plan before you get into marriage three p's that you need before you prepare, get prepare pray and plan before you get into mm. marriage yeah. great tips from mr lawson tonight <laughs> well um i had um chats with single ladies before today's episode mm. you've given me great points why you think people should not rush into marriage. Mm -hmm. um, Gladys spoke about reasons why she, she, she yes, is so. single, and mm. her reason could be the reason for so, so many other women. 
On the other hand, some told me they've tried and tried and tried over and over again, always landing in the hands of wrong men. Mm -hmm. Some have been treated badly, some have been through violence, all sorts. Some are single because they've been in and out. And out. Mm -hmm. Some are single because their men worked hard on them. Mm -hmm. All sorts of terrible reasons why women are single. My main question tonight is, Gladys, why do you think we have a great percentage of women in our today's society and in the church single? There's a number of reasons. I think you've highlighted one of those um, reasons about um, people who've gone through it's, relationships. It's not about people not trying. It's it, not about people not ready. It's not yeah. about people not, not um, desiring. Um, I, I wanted to answer one of your, the, the point you mentioned earlier about the women that you said you spoke to before. I think, you know, you raised a really fantastic point about knowing yourself and developing yourself. I'm of a belief, and that's why I wrote the book Overcoming Emotional Baggage, as well as the book um, uh, Quit Hiding, Start Living, yeah. to help women Good deal with years. baggages of the past. Because what sometimes, and it's not just women, by the way, men, men. as well, yeah. we all have journeys in life prior to where we're coming mm -hmm. from. And unfortunately, sometimes that could actually end up damaging us, for, yeah. the, you know, for the lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us are carrying issues into that relationship, whereby actually, it's probably not the relationship you should be focusing on. Get yourself sorted. Mm -hmm. Place yourself on the altar and get that baggage dealt with. And especially when, and I always say that to women in particular, when there are cycles, constant cycles. You've mm. been through one relationship, the second relationship, I would say actually pause. Just, just put it when on When you've hold. been through one, just, two. Just, just pause. pause and take note. I mean, in the world, you hear people say things like, what is life trying to tell you? Mm. You know, so it might be a case for me, I would actually say, what is God trying to tell you? Take a back step and think about, you know, if I'm attracting abusive men, if mm -hmm. I'm attracting a certain type of people, is it something I'm putting out? Do they read desperation on me? Mm. You know, there's so many factors here. And that's why for me, it's all about empowering women. Build your esteem. Build your confidence. We're not saying, you know, we can do it without you kind of thing. Men, <laughs> we can't. <laughs> we can't. But what we're saying is, is, is it's, you're, can. you're coming into a relationship and then marriage from a place of strength. Mm. Not of, you know, you know, for example, some people, unfortunately, you know, you've had poor role models, male figures in your past. You know, oh. you've got daddy's voice telling you how useless you are. You've got every male figure you've ever had telling you negative things. And all of a sudden you kind of, OK, if that's what they're saying about me. That's who I am. That's oh. the best. I can. Oh. So that's the value and the worth that you've placed on yourself. On and so sometimes we get ourselves caught in a muddle by getting or even that's why I said about earlier on about rushing into relationships really but that's just one ha uh, one part you know people as I said are, are single for various reasons some people want to progress their careers some people you know whoever they class as Mr. Right hasn't come along mm. um, you know sometimes and I think both within the church and even outside of the church the, the because of our working schedule and our working life the opportunity to just meet people is so limited so I don't limited. know if you'll agree with that you know so for example you know I call it I used to call it the triangle life you go to church you go to work and you, you're okay. home so it's that triangle so if you don't break out of that triangle you know sometimes we think on a Sunday he's gonna walk down the aisle well for some sisters yes and brothers you know they might that might be the case but in actual fact he might be at the bus stop you know, yeah. he might be on your way to work. He might, he could be anywhere. That's why I said watching and praying. Okay. What is Father saying to you about this? So there, there are a number of reasons why. And as you said, there, after speaking to a number of women, they said, well, actually, um, you know, in, in terms of um, this idea, this issues around men feeling intimidated with women and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, let's come to that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know you know, the, you know the, the, the thing, the irony of I find of those conversations is here's, here's the deal. You know, maybe 20 years ago, you're told, get a life, go and study, right. travel the world, do all those kind of things. So, you know what, as women, we do what we're told to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we get out there, we go and do those things. All of a sudden, 20, 25 years down the line, we've accomplished these things. It's like, oh, well, you know, yes. you, know you, you, you seem to be independent. Well, actually, it's not out of choice. In this country, you have to work. <laughs> you have to work. You have to do things. So... Yeah, yes, some people, talk, there's that issue about the debate, but you know what? If I was a guy who saw a successful woman, number one, I would celebrate her to say, you know what? 
it's no mean feat. Mm -hmm. You've accomplished a great thing in this society where the challenges, there's the glass ceiling, there's so many things mm -hmm. out there. Number two, if I was a guy and I saw a lady doing great things, you know what, I'd be thinking, my God, if she can do that by herself, how about when I'm by her side and supporting her, how much more would she, better would she be as a person? So you know what, so that idea of you know, the, the gap, I would say, brothers, step up. If you feel that's an issue. Step up, right? Step up. If you feel that's an issue. Step up. Step up. Brothers, step up, step up says Gladys up. tonight. <laughs> if you ask an average lady, why are you single? You hear stories of heartbreaks, disappointment, Mm. This and that. Why are men like this? Why are men like that? Yeah. Like what? I got to, I got a break. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Why are what? men like this? No, I think um, you're gonna break. Or uh, answer my question quickly. I got an like break. That? I mean, yeah. I it's not all men are like that. I'm not like that. It's true. No, all men are like that. And as Gladys was saying, that what I used to put. A lady told men, me this last week that reasonable good men are no more. No, no, they are there. They've all been taken. No, I was no, been taken. They are there. There are there. They've all been taken. I was no, told. I, no, I and she was like, the, the, the breed of men around now are heartbreakers. Uh, Mention them. That's a sweeping statement. It's a generalized statement. I don't yeah. think that's fair. There are, there are still some good men. I think one of the key issues, and that's why in the world they do speed dating, all sorts of things in the city, because they realize because of our lives, we're just not connected. Okay, let's give an example. We, assuming your church has a singles ministry, oh. right? What's the percentage of people who turn up? It's more likely 90% women mm. and with the one token guy, bless him. We'll come into that. Maybe we have to, th I don't think someone told me, someone made that same point you made yeah. and was like, so do we do ratio one to what? No, we don't. There okay. Is, we uh, don't. Let me go on a short break. I know my, <laughs> my people are itching to call in and, you know, put in their own contributions tonight. We will go on a short break and when we return the studio line, we'll open you will join us, I mean, join us on tonight's chat. Why are a great percentage of women single? Gladys says men should step up their game and be, you know, be the Mr. Right so that ladies can, the successful one can have you also need to be Mr. Mr. Huh? Right. You also need to be Mr. <laughs> right. We'll be right back. Mr. Right. <laughs> Here only because of you. If questions in the heart have been a blessing, we would ask of you to please soul towards our ministry so we can keep doing what we do. Please support us. Our website address is www.questionsintheart.com. Please click on the PayPal link. Telephone. 0788-120-7952. As you give to us this work, we can reach more and liberate more. God bless you. Debbie Ferriera is a model and fashion designer based in Chertsey, Surrey. She owns a ladies' boutique specializing in designer wear, shoes, accessories, and jewelry. The boutique is named Art Boutique because of the bright colors in the clothes range. Offering clothes to suit all seasons, whether it's for daytime, work, or evening events, Debbie has something to suit all ladies' requirements. The range of clothes at Art Boutique come from all over the world, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Paris and America. Specific items can also be ordered in if requested. Come and visit Art Boutique for a personal, friendly and enjoyable experience. We look forward to meeting you. Visit us on Facebook.com under Art Boutique Fashion.
thanks for staying with us on tonight's episode. Um, before we went on break, we were talking about men stepping up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I asked you why men are the way they are. Well, yeah. judging by my conversation with some ladies this past week, mm -hmm. everyone were on the same page. I've been jilted, I've been disappointed, I've been heartbroken by men. Well, it, I think for me to finalize that statement, I, was, I would say that you can only attract who you are. Okay, in uh, life, you uh, only uh, know. Uh, no, 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 uh. no, 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 let, let me justify that. You can only attract who you are. Because if you are telling me you are attracting uh, abusive <laughs> man, you are always been, being hit by a man, or you are being rejected by men, the question is who, you see, the fundamental thing is go back to source and ask God, who am I? See, if you um, don't know who you are, you always attract the wrong thing because you are not clinging. So if are I'm you able. telling me it's impossible for a good person to attract a bad one? Were well, you saying that, okay, they are, now how do we then know they are good? Now what you happens to ministers who were married? They had the great at the beginning. Right. But ended up in the verse. Well, you know what? I, I have a philosophy. Are they bad? Are they, no. are they too bad? I, I, I have a philosophy whereby it says, you know, we don't know the whole matter of the situation, yeah. so it's kind of unfair to comment on those kind of things. Right. But going back about what I said about the stepping up, I think one of the things that I have noticed, you know, in speaking to women is, is when I said step up, it's not so much oh materialistic things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, a lot of women go to conferences, they go to retreats, they read books, they put themselves under mentors to be taught, mm -hmm. you know, to be great women of God, you know, the Proverbs 31 women. Mm -hmm. So the stepping up I meant was not necessarily around just, you know, the materials to get yourself mm -hmm. a car mm -hmm. and whatnot. It's about stepping up as a man, a mm -hmm. godly man, you know, identifying who God has created you to be as a man, taking your position spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally on every level of okay. your life. It's about stepping up because if you, you know, I mean, even us women sometimes we have to do that in terms of stepping up you know, in a different areas of our life. For example, if you're going for, you said you're studying, uh -huh. because you, at some point you want to step up in your career, isn't yeah. it? So it's the same kind of mindset. If I am going back to what you said earlier on, if you feel you're attracted, probably not the right person. I do believe no, Could that be about because you're going not good? back to source. But also, yeah. sometimes, you know, we say certain things, but sometimes our bodies, our body language is saying something different. Oh. The way we put ourselves across, the That's way right. we, and I'm not just necessarily talking about dressing, that, yeah. Yeah. but the way we portray ourselves, the way we carry ourselves mm. says something. So when somebody sees you, do they see a queen, a That's precious right. diamond? Mm. Do they see a king, a How great man of God? The what are they yeah. seeing? So I think a lot of that has an impact because sometimes people, like you said, you're watching us on our Facebook pages, oh. people are watching from afar mm. and they're looking for traits, the fruits of the spirit. They're looking for all these kind of different things. Oh. And that's, you know, so I think those are the kind of things I'm looking at when we talk about stepping up. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm trying to do with women is, is support them in stepping up. Mm -hmm. And I encourage the gentlemen as well to, to step up on every front. Yeah, but like, having said Men should that, step up on every, yeah, every front because someone, one lady told me this last week that men are particularly scared, intimidated and afraid of successful women. Is that true? Well, I don't think from my... Anytime I, I want to put myself in the picture because I don't think that is the case. Mm -hmm. But to some men, it could be the case because, as you said, it's about upbringing. Mm -hmm. It's about family control that probably the guy had or maybe abusive family that you, you, know, you grew up in. So that can also affect. So when you see somebody trying to be better than you, you think, well, you know what? I don't want to go down there. Because, mm -hmm. you, because that's why you have to deal with yourself. I'm going back to source again. See, I want to discover who you are. And then you, you've dealt with your baggage, as my sister was saying. Mm -hmm. Because those things can always revisit. You know, Bible says we're thinking about re, uh, revisiting things. So, some of the things that can revisit you can affect your relationship. Even if it can even stop you from moving forward. In the sense that maybe if you saw your mother being abused by your father as you're growing up, oh. and then you realize that, listen, or maybe uh, vice versa, yeah. I mean, a boy or both mm. male and female. And then, look, let me say uh, 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 a man seeing the mother beating the father. Maybe it could be strange, but some maybe got some women who are Muhammad. Muhammad Ali, oh. they beat your husband, but it, it's not like in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So seeing a child, a child seeing something at home, growing as a, as a male boy, seeing that, okay, now I've seen a lady who's authoritative, who is trying to get oh. everything to herself. You know what? Let me step back and watch. 
So that they may be step back, they might be interested, but they will not come straight for intelligence. I'm interested because they are watching, as you say, the fruit of the spirit. They're watching. Is that, if I marry that lady, is it going to demonstrate uh, the role that my mother did in my family? Maybe it could be an abusive mother or stepmother that mm. you grew up with, and then you realize that, you know what, well, I don't want to marry somebody like that. So therefore, that can stop a man from also you know, stepping up as, you, as we use the word step up. Mm. I always say step up and keep mm. up. So therefore, what is stopping the men from stepping up? It could be this kind of little, little thing. The Bible says little, little foxes. Mm. So until you deal with the under root cause, mm. it will always hang, hang around your neck. Mm. And that's what the reason I always say to people, it don't rush into anything that you are not ready to until you settle yourself down. Settle, sit down, ask yourself, do, um, analyze yourself, ask yourself, who am I? Because once you know who you are, when you get, when you see your match, you know this is my match. When I met my wife, I saw my wife. Though I'm not saying our marriage is perfect. I'm not saying that. We are working at it. We know that's a challenge. For example, I'm here, no ring. It could, somebody will fight me to the, to, to, to the grave. But my wife understands that, listen, I have an allergy to metal. And therefore, she knows that my doctor said I can't wear metal. So she understood. Somebody like that, you want to move around with, you want to understand more, you want to get closer to the person. So if you don't understand each other, even knowing as a friend, some people want to be in a relationship, they are not friendship to anybody. How do you want to be caught? How do you want to be, you know, approached by a woman and a man? I mean, it doesn't so it's not sense. it's not about men being um, scared. It's not about men being scared. In, in, in defense of women as well, can I just say that, sometimes in the roles they are in the offices say for example she's the chief exec and blah 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 mm. or a minister or those kind of things i think there needs to be on um, and this is a message for both uh, both but sexes here one now one minute please one minute please good okay. evening remy from dublin yes, good evening. hi remy um i would like to contribute to what they have done on, on, on tennis go on quickly my brother asked a question, the lady asked a question, which I, you asked a question concerning why do we have so much anger. I think the problem is what my sister said, that we have to define who we are. Hmm. That is no definition. We are not what we are claimed to be. Hmm. Some of us, we are no more black, we are not even white. We are in between. So there is a problem. <laughs> yeah, we, are, we, are, we have cultures, we have tradition. So the upbringing is we are coming in here to be, so much who we are. Mm. So when people see you, they see something different, and when they stay with you, they exist something different, they get confused. Mm. So we have to know who we are, where do we belong to. Mm. can't be a black lady, as a black lady, when it comes to money, it's you are the head of family. You're white. But you're you're white. <laughs> right. It All right, Remy. You that... can't go to school, but you want to live fine. You want to live fine, it doesn't work. Mm. It doesn't work this side, it doesn't work. You have to it's a side of know who you are. Whether you like it or not, that's the way it works there, you know. Mm. And when you bring up some African is everything is on, on the back end. The man will get tired. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Remy, from Dublin. We appreciate you. your call. Not yeah. who you are. I was going to say, just quickly, um, in terms of, you know, there's a difference between the office you carry mm -hmm. and the person. Yeah. And I think that, that, that was what you mentioned. That was, okay. Yeah. You, you, you there's are, a, there's a difference. For one minute you're this, yeah. the other minute you're yeah. that. And you're saying you, this, you're acting that. No, 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 no. I'm saying is that, for example, if a woman's a chief exec in the office, she has to yeah, be a leader. Yeah, that I was just okay. reflecting what Remy okay. said, yeah. So in your home, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. You should be a wife. Abso we're not saying anything about being subservient or whatever, mm -hmm. but there is a difference in the office. And I also wanted to put that message across to guys that just because she's in the head of this department or doing this or whatever, that's her office. Mm. She's not necessarily being the woman that, you know, she can be. So to try and judge somebody based on I what you guess, see yes. because of the office that they carry is almost, you're almost, again, shortchanging yourself because you're not seeing the real person. Mm. So that the only way to get to know them is to get closer yeah. and get to know them as a friend. And to be honest, that's the that's best basis yeah. of yeah. A, any relationship. Mm. Marrying your best friend. Marrying your best but. friend. <coughs> I'll take you up on that. <laughs> okay. An old woman told me on this show, you don't need to be friends to be married. Wow. Okay. Well. You don't need love to be married. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Wow. She she went. Uh, 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 oh, good evening, Ugo from Highland. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Good evening. Thanks for calling. Yeah. There is one thing I want to contribute on you. Are. Go on, please. Okay. Mm. What who who you know? We Christians. Let me come from Christians in our side. Mm. You know who have. You know, take out the foundation, the foundation of money from the Bible. Mm. So, like, we are 
even like Western people, mm. we say like women and men, they are equal in everything they are doing. Okay. So that kind of taking Bible and turning it upside down. Marriage started from the foundation of the earth when God created heaven and earth. If we want to follow Christ, that is the only side we are pulling, we are proving God that we are stubborn, that we cannot be part of law. We want to follow Christ. Some men want to be a man of God. They don't keep their own path as well. Some women want to be a woman of God. They will tell you God has called them. So therefore they cannot talk and they cannot be on that man. But when you go back to the basics, both apostles in the act of apostle, you find out what happened there. All of them were married. All of them. If nobody mentioned their wife, mm. their wife were mm. under them. They are not among the ministry then. But what you come today, once a man has a ministry, the woman wants to be equal right with the man in the ministry. Okay. So when you turn Bible upside down, and okay, men Ugo. and women equal <laughs> right, there will be too much single but because men have priority, men are upper. Okay, okay, Ugo, thanks for calling. What, what have you got to say to that? To be honest, I didn't quite hear. Can you summarize what He was what saying um, one of the reasons why women are single is because today's women wants to be yeah. on the equal platform with men. We don't mm. want to take the superiority according to him. The Bible stated that mm. men are better and superior. And so women. And I don't think the Bible says men are better superior. I think what God was trying to do is institute order in order. the home. Yeah. If there wasn't order in a home or any environment, it would be chaos. Okay. okay. So thankfully. So are you saying a woman is not equal to a man at any level? Okay. Shouldn't be. I, I don't agree. I don't understand the full context of what he's saying, but I don't. From what he's he just said, I, I don't quite agree with what he's no, saying. No, one of the things I've always known that the people say, oh, well, the men, the men are the head, or the men is the man is the head, mm. and the woman is what? If it's the, is the tail? No, I think uh, I had a, a pastor uh, on, a, on a single seminar some time ago. He made a profound analogy, and I, I really believed and I worked with it. What he said was. If, you, if men are claiming to be the head of the relationship or mm. the family, then the woman is the neck. Mm. Because you can't turn your head without, without turning your, your neck. neck. Good evening, Samuel. Thanks for calling. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's a very interesting topic, and it is one of the crucial issues that are really affecting uh, many relationships in this country. Mm. Uh, the reality of the fact is that we are living in a society, especially in the UK, whereby women are, women are in a much more better advantage of, in this country. Mm. And we also allow men to step down from their position when it comes to relationship because of the fact that women are, are much in advanced situations, especially in this country. That's why you see in many relationships, as soon as the people come from Africa and they're here, the women take up the lead to say that, you know, you cannot do what I got, what I got. And mm. the respect that a man of the house should get, he doesn't get it here. And that also affects relationships. That's why most of the relationships really in the in UK doesn't work. And there is a system that goes on. Even though it looks like it's a beneficial system, but it's a spiritual system that's attacking Christians, which is single mothers. You don't hear a system of a single father. You only hear single mothers. And that system is killing uh, most of the relationship. We need to understand, we go back to the roots of the relationship. A man and a woman can never be equal. And that's why God says that a man is the head of the house. Okay. And the woman to submit to the men. So, so, so those other things. And as I said, this is a system that's affecting the UK in the whole world. Single mother. Alright, Samuel. Alright, Samuel. Thanks for calling out. Our time is going tonight. Yeah. What do you say to that? Is is this system that is affecting? Well, I, I think um from a point from a man's point of view, I would say yes. Really? The, yeah, I would say the community, the society. See, uh, when 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 we we get back to my son and then I, I push him in the pram, everybody's looking at me strangely. Where's the wife? Why are you pushing the problem? It, that's not the point. The society, so I went to my, my wife, I'm not pushing the boy again. Because society thinking that you're supposed to be doing it. But then because of grace and because of understanding, because of my level of maturity, I said, we made it, we laugh over it. And I carry on doing what I have to do. 
Now, society has contributed a lot in the relationship breakdown here and there. We don't want to go into deep of that kind of man and man relationship. We want to talk. We don't, we don't, I hope we don't discuss that tonight. But society has contributed a lot in the sense of giving the women the power because some, yeah, wow. because we, they believe that, especially in the culture we are in, not the whole world. What do you say to that, that The community that we find ourselves in now. <laughs> Women have upper hands. They are. Well, I, mm, I, they, I, they, I, they bend the well, the, the, the no, community. The, no, the, I mean, if you, if, you, if you look around, even in our society today, you you would hear the term about the glass ceiling. You know, where you know th there isn't equal pay. There is. There's a whole load of issues that, yes, outside that's infiltrated into the into the church. Mm -hmm. I don't think, um, as the, you know, as it was said earlier on about. Um, you know, the issue, okay, yes, there's all those feminism and, and mindsets and whatnot, but the Bible's clear cut in terms of roles that we have. Yeah. And I think when we start to deviate from what God says, we cause a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going back to that basics. Now, um, you know, even, you know, people might, you know, have all sorts of... Uh, One minute. I, Good evening. Thanks for calling. Hello? Hello? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I am good. Thanks. Your contribution quickly, please. We've got to go. Right. Good evening. Uh, my contribution to this is that um, people tend to forget that we, we were created, you know, to honor one another, not to be slaves to any other, but to be helping one another. The idea of having, you know, saying that the husband is upper and the wife is upper or the lower and things like that, it doesn't work like that. God wants us to honor each other and empower each other so that we can be one for him because the home that is divided cannot operate. So we need to actually operate as God has commanded us to operate at work in the other. Okay. Men is the head, yes. But the women also are not the, the boots. They are there to support each other and okay. make them okay okay thank you so very much we've got to go tonight well we would have to continue this topic next week we have we we yet to you know do justice to our questions and um i've got text messages coming in that i can't even read out because our time is gone tonight uh we've got books from the table of um the beautiful author gladys and um mr lossing has got his own book as well but next week by the grace of god we'll be able to do more they can get your books on Amazon, isn't it? Amazon and my website, GladysF.com. Uh, you want um, Gladys books, just visit our website. I think our details was on the screen. And Amazon as well. Yeah, and yours Amazon on Amazon. Well. Mm -hmm. Next week, by the grace of God, we'll be able to talk more on your products, you know. Uh, well, I must say uh, a big thank you to you for coming on this show tonight. Uh, we've got a lot to deal with. I need you back here next week. Thank you so very much. <laughs> so we'll come your way, same time, same station, next week. Keep the light of God shining on the inside of you. Mm. And for single women out there and men, you can. God bless you. Good night.